This video is sponsored by Skillshare. In this video, we're gonna make some amazing cyberpunk terrain, and I'm gonna show you how I go about starting a new project, what I do to get inspired, and how I go about designing a new build. And it's not as easy as you think. Hey everyone, my name is Neil, and this is Real Terrain Hobbies. And in this video, we're gonna make some crazy cool cyberpunk terrain for your tabletop games, your D&D sessions and whatnot. So one critical component for any cyberpunk terrain and diorama is of course the lighting, the LEDs, and we're gonna go all out. I got a huge box full of stuff and I'm gonna be using something called Arduino. And that is a way to program your lights and make them do insanely insanely cool lighting effects i'm going to be doing some kind of chasing lights and a lot of different stuff on here it's going to be packed full of leds we're going to come back to that a little bit later i'm going to push these to the side and we're going to start off making our base i'm going to have some water features in here as well and some other cool things to kind of set this apart from your typical grungy cyberpunk uh scene that you might typically see to a good start here so I always find the beginning of a project to be the most daunting maybe the most frustrating uh, just trying to figure out an overall design that works well looks good and is going to be something that you can be really proud of for me on this particular project the base came to me fairly quickly and it wasn't such a big yes. deal but later on you'll see building design buildings are something i haven't done much of and that is going to be a key focus on this entire project so i found that to be a quite a difficult challenge reference images go a long way in particular something i've recently discovered called a mood board and this is incredibly helpful for trying to come up with uh, new ideas um basically what you do is grab a whole bunch of images from a specific genre so in this case cyberpunk you can see we got a good spread of buildings of the different styles and things and you can take different elements from each of those images and sort of combine them into something that you can make your own and that's really important instead of just trying to come up with things in inside of your head or whatever which i'm not really good at I find a mood board to be an incredibly effective tool. All right, so something I should mention about the video here, I'm gonna be changing up the format just a little bit. I'm gonna be talking uh, quite a bit less and actually using a lot less music and the point of that is to sort of bring you into the environment of what I'm kind of doing kind of pull you in how I'm working and just kind of make it feel more real it's something I've been wanting to really do and try out anyway uh, there's going to be some background stuff some background noises and things and the kind of various stuff that I'm listening to and all that uh, tabletop time in particular has become one of my new favorite channels and we're gonna actually be talking a bit about uh, a bit more about them uh, in a bit here actually but I hope you enjoy this format anyway I'm s it's still gonna be very instructional I'm gonna break in when I can and when I know I need to uh, so I really hope you enjoy the format and just let me know what you think down in the comments below about all of it right so what i'm using here is actually snow flocking this is i think army painter snow flocking it's a little bit more grainy and this i find is a perfect mortar substitute uh, the graininess really gives it a nice texture that looks like concrete and mortar so i just brush that in spray it down just to get it wet and then apply some watered down pva glue 
and then after that apply some washes in there to you know give it that more natural weathered look rather than a nice crisp white <laughs> and it does the perfect job So now we're going to be moving on to the concrete sidewalks and curbs and I'm going to be using cork board again for that and this is exactly what we used in the Jazza build. He's got uh, some cork board in his Mega Minis box and it actually is the perfect material for concrete. I absolutely love this stuff for concrete. Uh, particularly that it wears and chips away really nicely and gives it a very believable and realistic concrete feel. So you'll notice that I give uh, the glue a little bit of a spray here after I apply it. That's actually called an accelerator and it causes the glue to harden crazy quickly. It's an amazing, amazing thing. Uh, I have that and all the other products that I'm using here in this build on my website, almost all the other products. And uh, those are affiliate links here that you can use. And by using those, it gives me and the channel a bit of a kickback and just helps me out that way. So just a quick mention of these teeny tiny little LEDs here. I got them, uh, the idea for them from Luke Towen's gold mine video. And uh, they're amazing little lights. I got a ton of colors. I got pinks, purples, blues, greens, reds, uh, a couple other ones too, and obviously the soft white. And uh, they do a really, really nice job. And they're super tiny, but I'll put the links down for those. I'm gonna be using those quite heavily in this project. So now it's time to give a quick thank you to this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. For this project, we're going to be getting heavy into Arduino for all our lights and our lighting system. And you better believe that Skillshare has a course specifically for that, which I took. It's called Introduction to Arduino, Creating Interactive Projects by Mark Fronfelder. And for me, being a complete beginner, beginner and noob to Arduino, this was a perfect primer for getting into it, understanding the basics, and really being able to tackle this stuff with confidence. And Skillshare actually has several courses on Arduino. This is just the introduction. I'm going to be taking more as I continue on with the project. So not only that, Skillshare offers so much more, whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. And the first thousand people to use a link in my description below will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership and after that it's only around 10 bucks a month so go take that Arduino course as there's so many cool things you can do with that as you're gonna see in this project So I got these little lights sent to me by Woodland Scenics, which is really nice of them. And these are kind of an older style, as you can see. So I kind of wanted to go uh, for a mix of the cyberpunk, mixing kind of new with old and sort of add a little bit of a twist to uh, your typical cyberpunk. This will be more upper class on this side of the uh, little channel anyway. The other side, maybe not so much, but uh, I think they're going to look really nice and add a lot to the overall build.
So we've got those little barricades up. Now we're just going to fill this road in and it's going to be asphalt again. And the best method I found for this, actually using the same method from the Jazza build, the Jazza project there, that collaboration. Uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out just above here, is just using some sand. So I got the sand from a sandbox. I, I use some watered down PVA, some fairly thick watered down PVA first, and then you soak it afterwards with uh, a sprayer, just like this, just with water, and then use some watered down PVA again on top of that. And it just gives such a good effect. I go really heavy with the watered down PVA on top of this afterwards, and it kind of evens out the bumps a little bit, and uh, adds a bit of variety in there too, and it really gives a nice convincing asphalt effect. All right, so here we are with the project. And this is one day's uh, worth of work. So I got quite a bit done and I'm actually quite happy with what I was able to do. We got all the little tiny brickwork done here. I'm really liking that. I use the same style that we used for the uh, Jazz uh, collab there for the, the stonework on that. And this time I actually applied it directly onto the big styrofoam pieces. And I'm really loving how that turned out. And again, we use the sand too, just like the Jazz build. I think that's the perfect way. I, it gives off a really nice realistic look. If we're doing the roads, it still needs some weathering and stuff. It's pitch black right now, so we'll fix that. But yeah, I'm actually at the point right now, I'm at a bit of a crossroads as to uh, where I want to take the project. I can do two things. So I've been playing a game called Backbone, crazy atmospheric uh, film noir type 50s vibe. And I just really, really love the setting and the atmosphere in that. And so it would still entail a ton of LED lights, but we also got the cyberpunk theme that I really want to do too. And speaking of that, the reason why I want to go cyberpunk or one of the reasons is I'm actually following Jazz's new channel, Tabletop Time. Now I am loving Tabletop Time. It's really reminiscent of Critical Role and they got a really big campaign going, which is what I'm enjoying the most. They got uh, the three players, Jazza, Rob, and Jen. And then Dave is the narrator. And you can see they also do things like uh, miniature painting. They got uh, mini Mondays and then they got to one shot Wednesdays where they just do a one shot uh, campaign D&D session. And then there's Saga Saturdays, which is their big cyberpunk campaign. And that is heavily uh, influencing my project as I move forward here. And there may be some sort of cross something or another between us and them maybe in the future kind of coming up, maybe in part two, we'll see. <laughs> but uh, anyway, go check them out and subscribe. They're an awesome channel and you'll love it. So it's a toss up. You're gonna find out right away which direction I go, but right now, I don't know. And I actually took the question to my patrons. I took it onto the Discord on the Patreon uh, there. So if you want to be a part of the decision making through all of this, you can sign up on Patreon. Not only can you be involved with this, but you're also supporting the channel and helping me grow and all that stuff. And I'm really trying to build up those patron members to help me with this and help me get full time. But anyway, the point is you can help steer the course of these projects as they go. I, I'm uh, updating the Patreon there too. Depending on your tier, $5 and up, you get to see some behind the scenes and see the updates on these projects as they go. So those guys are gonna help decide where we're gonna go with this. For now, I'm gonna start boxing in the buildings and the general layout. And yeah, so I'm excited for this. And hopefully I'll get an answer from the patrons soon as to whether we go either the film noir or the cyberpunk. Okay, <clears throat> so 
We're kind of at that uh, tricky stage where we got to figure out exactly how we're going to design this. I've never found this stuff before, but I was actually able to peel off one layer of the paper and then you can actually put a, car of a texture into this side. I was only one side I wasn't able to do it on the other. But that's pretty cool knowing that we've actually got that here. I haven't been able to find that before. I did that on the Jazza build, but so I'm going to put the wall back so there'll be some seating areas here but then I want the roof to kind of maybe come out and up and then we can actually put some fake rooms in here so you can see into the windows and stuff even use some different shapes like these this box here just to try to figure out what reference images really come in handy um, so that's what I'm gonna be trying to figure out here I think this is one of the hardest parts is just figuring out your design and then once you got that nailed down then you can go ahead from there shop locally but anyway guys thanks for watching thanks for tuning in and I'll uh, stay again for the next video why bother looking at paint you might be able to use it for us to work with it just gets a little bit of contrast to the model and showed off the that black was sitting there with no highlight and I was looking at those eyes in some areas that are less detailed and less visible with a brightness of most exposure to light in the cut skin and lighting skin that are working paint details. The first area I paint is the mini, it's actually my thumb. What this does is remove Next day again, that time lapse that you just saw, I actually did not get as much done as I was wanting to. I basically got this done and that was kind of it, which is supposed to be my building <laughs> and there's not much there. Um, I'm really having a tough time getting this design on this building front figured out. Generally. Uh, cyberpunk they're more kind of concrete buildings this is actually the storefront sign for like the nightclub kind of thing but uh, today i actually ended up going out and grabbed some of this cork so this is some cork here and i'm going to be using this maybe even to panel the whole building and give it it's got a really nice texture that looks a lot like concrete what i'm going to do i'm going to design this sign and i need to put all the lighting and stuff on here first before I attach this and hopefully I can get this figured out because this is causing me uh, stress maybe a little bit because I, I want to get this going a little bit of stress a little bit of frustration and I just once I nail it down I know it's going to be good so I got to get this nailed down so let's do that and hopefully things just come together magically you know hopefully uh, fingers crossed
Okay, so I'm just working on the sign here. You can see that I added a new material. I ripped off all the cork that I put on there. And that was because that just was not working out. The, the grooves that I wanted these lights to fit in, these guys here, uh, was not working at all. This is what we've got now here. And I'm using these foam sheets, maybe two millimeters or something like that, thick. And this is the big giant pack I got here of the stuff from Michaels. And this is working way better. So you can see, here's my lights right here. And they fit in those grooves perfectly. So I got two of these. Now the problem is with these is this is basically, this is basically like a silicon material. Glue doesn't stick to these. I tried using uh, crazy glue, super glue and it didn't work at all. And I tried using the hot glue gun, that didn't work either, came off. I'm almost thinking that maybe I gotta like clamp it in place somehow with some wire or something. Gonna make a few of these signs, I think I gotta make them separately with all the wires hanging off. And I'll do something to manage those wires, some proper, so the wires aren't everywhere. Yeah, so it's gonna be a bit of work, but it's gonna be good. I'm excited to make some signs and get this going. So yeah, let's do that. Alright, so here we are with uh, the building right here, got a bit more of the structure together, but one thing, or maybe more than one thing here, that I'm doing is uh, something that's actually very similar to Jeremy from Black Magic Craft. And if I think about it, there's probably actually at least three elements that I'm taking from Jeremy's build. So if you haven't seen his build, Go check it out. I'll put a link up in one of these two corners here and you can look at his build, but uh, he had such such good ideas. One of them is gonna be uh, Trent from Miscast. I got some uh, little elements that I'm gonna be using uh, to print out that are some sci-fi elements that I'll be putting on here and printing those out, so that's one thing. The other thing was these fancy little lights that I got. They're similar to Jeremy's, but they actually work much better. And then the, the final third thing, maybe there's gonna be more, I don't know. I'm taking this from Jeremy. Sorry, Jeremy, this is such a good idea. So he printed out these signs on some clear acetate paper. That's what this is. So supposedly you can actually use an inkjet printer and print these out yourself. Uh, I couldn't find any of the actual blank pieces of paper. So I did the same thing that he did and went to Staples and printed out my own. And here they are. So as you can see, it's clear and transparent paper and this is a different signage. So I'll be using some of this signage here. It looks awesome. And you light it up from behind. Hopefully it lights up fairly well. And that's what you do with those. So I got a bunch of these. It's gonna look awesome. I'm gonna put some signs on here and elsewhere. And yeah, so that's what this stuff is. And it's super cool. And I'm excited to throw these up and on here. So these are actually in a link down in the description. I got these off of ArtStation, each of these signs, designs. Uh, so I think it's like five bucks for a whole bunch of these and you can check it out in the link below.
<sighs> okay. So I've been uh, 3D printing overnight here. This is uh, another day. And um, yeah, so these are actually some sci-fi components that uh, Trent from Miscast, uh, if you don't know his channel, check him out in one of these corners here. So he and his dad designed a whole bunch of these cool uh, sci-fi parts. And I printed a bunch of them off and you can stick them onto the building to really sci-fi up the building and add, you know, a lot of character to that. This is another thing that Jeremy did in his build, his cyberpunk build, is use these exact uh, models here. So I'm going to be using these. I got one more batch printing on the other printer there. And yeah, this is really going to make this really look, give it that cyberpunk kind of futuristic look. And it's going to be awesome. So let's get these things cleaned up. because you are, while you're not objectively lying to her, you are misleading her through this entire okay, sequence. but am I? Because what if my character is intentionally actually looking at potentially you getting another model? You can't use the <laughs> argument of, um, I'm going to tell half-truths to get away from deceiving you. Yeah, because you are deceiving persuasion. her. Yeah. Deception. deception. Okay. Definitely deception. It's a, it's a classic... Hey, little tip for all you role players out there, don't let the bard always use perception. If they're... Uh, sorry, persuasion. Something like yours, obviously, most of your production will be offshore, but uh, would you have any areas on some My eyes usually what would happen, so it'd be hard. Going through a very... Do they know they're dead? Like, we don't know that. You don't know anything. Rubber-stamped approach to doing <laughs> right, our very illegal <laughs> plan of action. Yeah, no. check for cameras. You may. Uh, skill checks that involve finicky things with your fingers, correct? Is it, is it finicky? Yeah, I'm it's a dexterous think. ability, which is reflex. I'm it's... grabbing a screwdriver and unscrewing some shit. Fine electrical components, though. It's not like you. 